What's up guys, it's Meg, and today we're reviewing uh, The Walking Dead comic issue number 151. I just finished reading this issue. I didn't really have any reactions except to the very last page, which I'll show you guys now. Oh, there's somebody out there. What? 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 I don't think that's... What? It's not zoomed properly, you can't see that, but what? <laughs> so I really enjoyed this issue. Uh, I like how it starts out with Rick leading all of, of these men and women from Alexandria uh, in, in training for the army. They're training to shoot here. And I like how he's giving them, he's standing on the side, he's giving them directions and everything. And suddenly they become overwhelmed and surrounded by walkers. And uh, it quickly, can get out of control here and starts to get out of control and we see Dwight take over and he says things like um, take them out then reposition and then Rick's kind of cheering them on but not really doing anything because we know Rick's kind of at the stage he's been through a lot he has to walk with a cane he's missing a hand um, you know he's kind of seen his days of fighting and can't really do it that well anymore now he can obviously when he was beat up the other day here in the last issue maybe it wasn't the last issue, but uh, when he was beat up, we can see that he can still take care of himself. But in these types of situations, he's almost not able to handle it as well anymore. And so we really see Dwight, uh, you know, take control when the walkers get too close. And we see him, uh, you know, yelling out commands, um, get in position, uh, you know, and we really see him save the day here. And Rick, at the end of it, comes to realize that he's not so good at it anymore. And he admits it to Dwight. And again, kind of, you know, Dwight fights back saying, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want this responsibility. And Rick's like, well, it's kind of too late because you already are, you know, and then that leaves Dwight there to think about it. Uh, I definitely enjoyed that. We then get another scene of Eugene. He's still messing with the radio. It looks like he's got it working. So he's putting out you know, he's sending out messages and calling and not getting a response uh, at this point. At the end of the issue though, we hear him get a response. And that was pretty amazing because, you know, he's been working on this for a while. I don't know that he even expected to, you know, hear anyone on the other end. On the other end. I think at this point it was almost like give him something to do to keep his mind off of Rosita. And so now that he actually heard that, we're left wondering, well, who are these people on the other end? Uh, it says, read you loud and clear, Eugene Porter, come in, do you read us? Over. So we have, at this point, no idea who it is. Uh, I don't think it's the whispers or anything like that, but is there another community somewhere um, farther out that we don't know about? Uh, that would be pretty amazing, and I think it's just opening a door for so many more storylines to come in, more bad guys, potentially, or not so much, you know, more characters, I mean, this whole world of The Walking Dead is always evolving. And so it's always neat to see them expand it even more. And we already have these, uh, you know, three, no, four communities going on plus the whispers. So it's kind of expanding it even more potentially, which is really exciting. Uh, I'm definitely excited to see what 152 has to do with it um, and to see if they bring it up there. So I thought this page was really interesting here where we see Rick talking to, um, who's this guy? Is this Vincent? Is that what his name was? He was, was he one of the guys who tried to attack Rick and then thought better of it at the end? I think that's who that is. Uh, anyways, you know, he's saying, He's saying, after what I did, I shouldn't even be here. And Rick's, Rick gives this little speech and he says, that's not who we are anymore. We're stronger than that. Doing a bad thing doesn't make you a bad person. And that's a key point here. Uh, if we wrote off, or if we wrote you off after that one mistake, think of all the good you're going to do that would be erased. He says, don't you get it? That's what we're doing here. And then he stops and he's thinking about what he just said. And the guy says, Rick. And he's like, sorry, just thinking. And then he goes and sees Negan right afterwards. So it kind of makes you wonder for a moment there if Rick, after he said that, immediately thought of Negan and the bad thing that he did, uh, which he did numerous bad things. Um, and maybe it was just questioning himself a little bit there. And then as soon as he goes down to see Negan, uh, <laughs> we see Negan laying there and he's still got his cocky attitude 
you know, it's a Negan attitude. And he says, what can I do for you today, fearless leader? And Rick just stares at him and I feel like it's cut and then he just walks away. And I think it's kind of like a realization like, yeah, okay, yeah, no, we're not gonna let him out, you know? <laughs> like he just maybe questioned himself there a little bit uh, when he was saying that. And then as soon as he saw Negan there, he just needed to remind himself. Um, I don't know, I could be reading into that wrong. Feel free to let me know what you guys think about that, um, that whole conversation and then him visiting Negan. I thought that was interesting and they definitely put that there for a reason. Now, Negan did help him out uh, with the advice to, you know, he gave him advice a few issues back and now Nick is, you know, putting some of that advice into play by creating an army and and um, giving the last speech that he did after he was attacked and he's really kind of listening and realizing that Negan does have some good advice here and I think that's why he went to visit him uh, you know and then he's suddenly reminded like yeah no not gonna let him out um, moving on, we see Gabriel wants to also join, which it was interesting that they just put this little panel in here. I feel like Gabriel may, I mean, there's really no reason to insert him into this portion unless it's going to come into play later on. Uh, so I think we'll definitely see something from Gabriel in the future issues here. Not sure what exactly, but he is going to be joining the army that they have building and become a soldier. So that should be interesting. Uh, and then we see Rick go home and he sees Michonne here and they start talking about her going to lead at the kingdom. And she says she just needed that little push to get her up there. And I love that. I have been hoping since Ezekiel died that Michonne would eventually go and take her place at take her place as leader of the kingdom and I'm interested to see just how the kingdom is faring because we haven't had any that I remember any scenes of anyone at the kingdom since you know, the Whispers killed off Ezekiel and, and all these other people. So it would be very interesting to kind of see Michonne go back to the kingdom and see what happens there. I definitely think that's more of a story that can be developed. And I'm interested to see where she's going. There is a, a comment at the end of this where um, she says, who are we sending to lead the saviors? And Rick says, haven't had a chance to think about it. Um, I want to work with people I trust. Any suggestions? And she's looking at him and she says, how old exactly is Carl? Um, I definitely don't think that she is suggesting at this point. It's more like a joke, like, haha, how old's Carl? Maybe he should do it. I don't think that's going to happen. I would hope not. Uh, because if that did, I would be pretty pissed off. He's incapable of just, I mean, he's just not mature enough at this point. Yes, he's seen a lot and he's a mature, like, survivor in the zombie apocalypse, but he's still very young and he's definitely not capable of leading a group of people, um, especially a group like the Saviors. So uh, I definitely think she was just joking there at that point. And then we see Eugene and we see Eugene and we hear uh, the voice on the radio. And this just, it's just opens a door for so many potential storylines with who's on the other end. Is it a new community? Is it potentially the more bad people. I mean, we just, is it the whispers? There's so many options here and I'm so excited to see more of this. Now we have, um, issue 152 coming and correct me if I'm wrong, cause I don't always follow when they release the covers, but we have this one here where it says silence the whispers and it almost looks like, um, like war propaganda. Uh, you know, like the war posters that you see when you take history classes at school. Uh, and you see one of these guys kind of spray painting it on the wall. Now, obviously this could just be symbolism or something. This may not actually happen in the future issue of the comics, but we see Dwight and this Laura girl who we've never seen before up in, that I know of up until a couple issues ago when we saw Dwight leaving um, the, the sanctuary there. So, so now we're seeing her almost every issue because she came with him. So it's kind of interesting to see where that will go. But I'm wondering if, if, you know, this is more of the amping the people up and, and whether or not they're actually putting these kind of propaganda spray painting these things, they may be doing that. But I actually think it's pretty cool because it kind of is, they're building this army and they're um, getting the people's spirits up. And am I making any sense? I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it, but you know, uh, I don't know how to say it. I'm, I hope you guys get it. I'm really excited for the next couple issues here. I, they just, it just keeps getting better and better every single time. I'm so amazed at this comic and how they, they never overdo, you know, the storylines. It's always just enough, at least for me. And there's always something new. And just when you kind of think, oh, it's getting a little boring, then 
they bring something in that's totally new or totally different or they surprise you or they do something crazy so I love it. Um, that's it for my review, you guys. I definitely enjoyed this issue. I can't wait for the next one. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. If I missed something, feel free to point that out and we can discuss it more there. I hope you guys have a great day. We have less than two weeks until The Walking Dead returns. I am so excited. It returns on Valentine's Day, February 14th. My birthday is the very next day, so it's like a complete Walking Dead celebration. I'm so excited for it to be back. I also have a question for you guys. Um, over the hiatus between um, the first half of season six and then now coming February 14th, the second half, I binge watched the entire, um, all of the seasons of Game of Thrones. I'm totally, completely obsessed with this show now. I want to know if you guys are okay with me doing reaction videos for Game of Thrones on this channel. I want to try and do reviews, but I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I've watched uh, the series, the entire series, um, just all the way through once. I watched a few of the issues, a couple, or er, issues, a few of the episodes a couple times. So I need to rewatch it again. I'm not entirely sure I could do good reviews of the episodes because I feel like I'm still trying to grasp the huge, the hugeness, is that a word? of a complicated storyline where we have all of these so many characters and they're all interconnected and their stories connect somehow and it's insane but oh my gosh I'm so obsessed so if you guys want to see videos for Game of Thrones on this channel as well please let me know in the comments below because I'd like to do it but I also don't want to piss you guys off so uh, that's it I love you guys I hope you have a great day I will see you next time bye